In this video, we'll look at arrays, slices and views, and we'll see what those are in a moment. So arrays are a very common way of, study, of storing data, of course. Not the only way by any means, there are plenty of other data structures that we can use. But so, since they are so important, it's very useful to know how to manipulate them in, in different ways. So let's start off by making a vector called v, and so I'm using the ones function to make a vector with containing all ones and we see that I can uh, have this different view by pressing this arrow it gives me a vertical view instead and this is the length of the array so I have 10 ones and we know that we can index into that array in other words extract one element using these square brackets so square brackets 3 gives the third element of the array uh, since Julia starts indexing at 1 the first element is index number 1 and we can modify the array using the same square bracket. So v indexed at the third element equals to assigns the value to to that element. And we see that in that case, v has changed. We've, ma ma we've managed to modify the third element of the array to give two. Now, if we want to extract a subset, several elements of the array, we can do so by indexing using a range instead. So a range is written with a colon and v square brackets 3 colon 5 will extract three elements of the vector starting at position number 3 and finishing at position number 5. So this is one reason why one-based indexing where you start at 1 is useful because these numbers exactly correspond to the positions in the array. And this is called a slice of the array. So when we extract a sub-piece of the array, a subset of the array that's called slicing. Now, what if, what if I want to modify this slice? How could I do that? So you might think that you could do that uh, just extending the previous syntax by using v square brackets three colon five equals four. But if I try and do that, I actually get an error. And uh, it tells me that the problem is that on the left, I have an array, but on the right, I have a number. And it doesn't make sense to assign a number to a, an array. So we have to actually be more explicit. We have to tell Julia, exact, Julia exactly what we want to do. What we want to do is assign the number four to each element of that array. And we can do that using this dot syntax called broadcasting. So if I do add a dot before the equal sign, I now I'm going to assign four element wise or element by element. So I'll assign four to the element number three, the number four, and the number five. And when I do that, uh, we have to check what happened to the original array. And we see that indeed, the original array got modified itself. So that was successful. And we can also use, uh, if we, we can also assign a new array to those elements. And if we do that, then those elements also change. Okay. So now let's think about, well, maybe I want to give a name to this piece of the array and manipulate the array via that new name. So let's call w the slice of v from three to five. So an important question is going to be, what happens if I now modify the object w? In other words, modify, I mean, go inside w and change something inside w. And um, so, just take a moment to think about what you think this will do before we carry on. What do you expect to happen? And what might the possibilities be for, for how this behaves? So take a moment to do that. So once we've thought about it, we should just ask Julia what it actually thinks. So W looks like an array. And now let's modify the first element of W. And uh, let's look at w and of course we expect that the first element correctly changed to eight okay great but but the question is did v change right so we took a piece of v and we called it w we're now modifying something inside w and the question is does v change and the answer is that it does not so this is a key thing to remember when we take a slice of an array and give it a name that is actually making a copy of the data. So there's a new copy of those three elements somewhere else in memory and W is referring to that copy. And when we modify that copy 
Of course, the original does not get modified once we know that this is actually what's happening. Okay, so yeah, so you have to remember that when we make a slice like this, it makes a copy and, and uh, it will not modify the original array. But of course, there might be a case where we want to be able to use this new name to modify the original array. So we have to do something different and that's make what's called a view. So how do we do that? We use this view function. So this is actually a function in Julia. I, get, I pass in the object, the array object that I want to make a view of, and again, the same range. And when I do that, it looks like, you know, uh, it, it looks from this display, it looks the same, but actually it's, um, we've created an object of a different type and we'll look at that in a minute. So now let's modify Z element by element. Uh, so I call Z is this view. I gave it the name Z now. And of course, Z itself has changed. And the question is now did the original array view also change? And so here is the array V and we see that it did change. And so that is the point of a view. So a view is like a window. You're looking into uh, the, the array. Well, it's even more than a window because you can actually reach in through that window and manipulate the original array. So it's a view that allows both reading and writing of the original data. So yeah, so let's just go come back to the types. If we compare the types of these two objects, W, which was the slice, which makes a copy, and Z, which is there's a view, then the original, uh, the making a copy makes a, the makes a new type, make, makes the, a type, makes an object. Making a copy makes an object of the same type, which is just array. But making a view makes this new type called subarray. And we well, this whole expression is this kind of complicated type of this new object. But uh, we're not going to worry about the details. It's just telling us exactly what kind of object is underlying this new type. Okay. Now you might be frustrated that this syntax looks a bit more difficult to use than the square bracket syntax. So Julia actually provides us with a solution for that. So the solution is to use this macro called at view. So at is something very special in Julia it indicates, as, as I said, what's called a macro. So what does a macro do? It actually takes this nice piece of syntax that we want to use and it replaces this expression by a different expression. So there's actually going to be a video on macros uh, that you will be able to watch for more details about this. But basically, uh, we can think of this as just literally replacing this piece of code V3 to 5 with the other piece of code view of v3 to 5. And this will create a subarray object because it is a view. And then when I modify this view, of course, now we know that the original vector also gets modified. Okay, so the same thing works for matrices as well. Let's make a small matrix here. Uh, there's a matrix, a six by four matrix. And we can make slices just like we did before, except now we need to give a range in the, uh, in the of rows and a range of columns. And then it will extract a sub piece. But again, because it's a slice, this will be a copy. So you should check that it is actually a copy. I'm not going to do it. And similarly, we can make a view and we can use the at view macro to turn a slice into a to, to make a view instead. And you can see that this is now a view. Uh, so, and finally, if we have a matrix, we can think about reshaping it. So uh, this matrix that I created was of size six by four. Now let's reshape it to be of size three by eight, which is, has the same number of elements, just, you know, we're looking at it and thinking of it in a different way. And the question is, you know, given what we've seen so far, you should be wondering, well, when I do this reshape, is it making a copy of all this data or is it a view into the original array? So that's for you to explore on your own exercise for the reader. And there's another useful function called a vec, which takes a matrix and turns it into a vector. 
So you can see that it's taking each element one by one in the matrix in a certain order and putting them into a vector. So this order that it's taking them in is actually reflecting the underlying way that the matrix is stored in memory in the computer. The computer's memory is linear. It just has a sequence of boxes in, in, a, in a row. And we have a two-dimensional object, so we have to make a choice about how we actually store that matrix into memory. Julia makes one particular choice called uh, column major. So the columns, you can see that it's taking the columns first. It's taking each column, it's moving down the column and putting those elements into the vector. So again, you have to ask, is this function vec making a copy or making a view? Now, making copies of memory, copying elements in memory from one place to another is an expensive thing to do. So we should avoid it when we can. We cannot always avoid it, but when we can avoid it, we should. So you just have to go and check, do these two operations, reshape and vec, make copies or make views. And you have to remember that when you use them in the future. So in summary, we just need to be aware, are we making a copy using a slice or are we making a view? Sometimes we need one of those and sometimes we need the other. You just have to take care to use the right one.